What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. So, we see the Colorado Buffaloes took an L to the Oregon State Beavers uh, by a score of 26 to 19. I'm going to say this, man. The defense is improving for Colorado. Um, Shiloh had another big game. Um, I, and I've criticized Shiloh on this channel for missing tackles, etc. But he's forcing turnovers, which puts the offense in good position to score. You know what I mean? Forcing turnovers is always good for a defense. So he's done that in, what, two straight weeks? So I got to give him kudos and I got to give him praise for that. However, we got to get to the offensive side of the football, right? And I didn't take notes on this because I, it's just something that I noticed. I really like Shador Sanders as a quarterback. I really think he's talented. I think if he has time to throw, he can be a special guy. And I think he can, he can fling it. He's shown that throughout this season. My problem is Shador holds onto the ball for way too long. Way too long. Okay? Now, I know a lot of the onus goes onto the offensive line. Hey, the line not blocking for him. They're not blocking. They're not blocking, etc. Shador got to make quick decisions. For real. He takes way too long to, to be decisive to figure out what he's going to do. And he's holding the ball for way too long. Then he's refusing to throw the ball out. He's just taking a sack which puts them in unmanageable positions. The offense now was on third and 20, third and 15, instead of it being third and seven, third and six. You know what I mean? Because he does not, he don't, he just keeps allowing, he keeps taking the sacks. He's not throwing the ball out, throwing the ball away. He's just going to take the sack, take the sack. And I'm like, yo, you're going to keep hurting this football team time and time again. And he keeps doing it. He's been doing it all season long. That's makes, that makes me think, yo, Coach Prime, you got to talk to your son. You got to talk to your son. Okay, and that's why sometimes I don't think father-son duos work well in coaching sometimes because a lot of times those coaches are there. It's hard for them to be critical of their sons. They can criticize everybody else, but, you know, when they want their son to succeed, when they want their son to be an NFL quarterback, when they're trying to uh, transition him into the NFL, they don't want to be overly critical because they feel like, hey, it could damage my son's reputation and image. But we see what's going on, Coach Prime. We can see it as clear as day. Like, for real, like, when they were 1-11, this team only allowed, uh, not this same team, this is a completely different team. That's why I hate when y'all be like, well, he turned this whole team around. They was 1-11. This a whole, look look at the team improve. This a whole new roster. There's only 10 guys, about 10 guys left from that team last year. But the team that went 1-11 last year, they only allowed 23 sacks. And I know some people might say only allowed. That's crazy. But, yeah, they only allowed 23 sacks. I promise y'all, they, they damn near getting 10 sacks in a game with Shador back there as quarterback, right? And this was the 1-11 team, which shows you that it's not just the offensive line. Yes, the offensive line is not good. They've not been playing well. They can improve drastically, and I've said that since day one. But when you look at what's going on out here, um, you like, yo, Shador is holding on the ball to, for way too long. And they gonna, you're gonna get, he's going to get sacked. I mean, yeah, he's going to get sacked eventually because he's not throwing the ball out. So that's something he got to communicate to his son. Instead of just putting up the blame on the offensive line all the time, your son can do better things, Shador. And I really like Shador. He can improve on it for sure, right? Then I'm going to say this too, man. Um, the running game isn't as bad as they make it seem, which is why, I mean, it's not good. But I'm, I'm puzzled at the fact that they're not running the ball at all. They're not running at all. Like, it's just like you just... Like, you're just refusing to run a football. That's coaching malpractice to me. For one, if you run the ball, it stops the team from blitzing, okay? And it, the damn defense won't be in your damn son's neck and face every single time. Because they know no team in college football can win just simply by throwing the ball. Throwing the ball all game long, that's not going to work. And I don't know. Some people have looked at it like this. I don't know if Coach Prime is trying to bolster Shador's stats so he can look like he throwing. he's just throwing 400 yards a game. 373 whatever but in order for them to be successful in order for them to be, to win games in order for Shadour to be safer in certain times they're gonna have to run the ball you're gonna have to and to me that shows coaching ineptitude because like for real like I, and I wrote this situation down okay they threw the ball from their own four yard line right with a minute to go and a half they threw the ball on their own four yard line like, like refusing the ball when you got to, that's crazy to me. That's crazy. They didn't want to run the ball against Stanford, which allowed, you know, they, they left enough time on the clock. Keep trying to throw the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball, leaving a lot of time on the clock for Stanford to make that comeback. And to me, that's just like, that's coaching X and O's to me. Like, why are you not, why run the ball, man? Run the football. 
Try to slow down this clock. Stop the onslaught. Slow down their momentum. He don't want to throw the ball. Keep throwing, keep throwing. And I'm like, yo, again, I, I didn't want to listen to the noise about him trying to make sure Dor throw for Tom Brady numbers every game. But it's starting to look like that. Like, what are you doing? What are you What are you out here doing, man? And, um, like, again, it, it does a disservice a disservice to Shador. Again, they can if if uh running the ball stops the team from blitzing all the time, right? And like I said, there's no team in college football that's gonna win just by running the ball. Uh I mean just by throwing the ball. You know, so and I and I've noticed this too, man, and I uh people are gonna get mad at me for saying this. I don't think Coach Prime is really good at making adjustments. I really don't. I think he's a guy where He's a great motivator. He can deliver the best speeches. He can say all the things that sound excellent. He can have you ready to run through a brick wall and all of that. But I think there are certain things that he just not like. He didn't. He didn't even call a, a, a timeout when in the second half of that Stanford game, when Stanford was making a comeback, he didn't call a timeout in the second half at all. That's crazy to me. Why are you not gonna give your your, your players a time to breathe, a time for them to get rest? And then to galvanize them, to rally them in. Like, you see what's going on. Your team, the lead is dwindling down with every possession, with every drive they're taking. And you're not going to call a timeout. That lets me know, man, it's certain things that he's, yeah, he's not really good at making adjustments. He's a good motivator and all of that. And if he has by far the best talent, he can win when he has by far the best talent. But when the talent is just a toss-up, and the other guys, the other guy got a little, he got spe more special players on his team. And Prime, not, he's not really able to make adjustments to figure that out yet. I'm not saying he's never going to be able to do that. But right now, he's struggling to do so. When he was in a swag at Jackson State, he had by far the best talent. By far. Right? And he was able to run through the swag. And especially when, with him recruiting from using his name. D dudes that was at Jackson State that would never commit to Jackson State previously. You know, but then when he went up against the MEAC in the Celebration Bowl, he lost both of those games and got out coached significantly, severely out coached in both of the games. You know, so to me, um, Deion Sanders is looking like uh, Coach John Calipari, a great motivator, and he can win when he has talent that is le head and shoulders above the rest of the competition, like he won in 2012. But when it comes down to the coaches, coaching X's and O's, adjustments, etc. He's just not really great at doing that, which is why Coach Cal only got one ring when he definitely should have more than that. They should have beat. I don't know how the hell they they lost to Wisconsin a year when they had Devin Book and them. He bringing Devin Book off the damn bench for the Harrison Twin. And them. I don't ridiculous. I don't, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I think Prime is is he is of that ilk, a great motivator, but he can't draw up certain things to, to stop the bleeding. That's what a coach does. A coach figures out a way to stop the bleeding. And to me, he got to look at himself at certain times, too. Instead of pointing a finger at um, with Sean Lewis, offensive coordinator, you know, the offensive line, there's certain things you could do, like even telling your son to throw the damn ball away. Okay? You got to tell him that. And all he's taking sacks, putting them in these wild, but they third and, third and damn 25, third and 20. He, he, that's how I know he's not talking to Shadur about it because, like I said before, he keeps doing it over and over and over again. So either you're going to coach it or condone it, like Shannon Sharp says, and he's condoning that. You know, so he got to clean that up. It's just, yeah, it's certain things. Like the offense, the defense is playing well. Defensive line played a lot better than they did previously, which I, which I was impressed with. You know, Oregon State is a great team. They were able to, you know, hold them to 26 points. Um, they were able to keep the game close at times. But I'm telling you, the game would have been much more, they would have had a chance of winning. If they, if again, Shador don't take all them sacks all the time. If they run in the ball, if they at least trying to run the ball, act like you're going to run the ball. So that's something he has to look at himself in the mirror about. Because when he did the 60 Minutes interview, they asked him, who the best coach in college football? He said, Shoot, do I need a mirror? I'm paraphrasing, basically saying you looking at him. So if you're looking at him, you got to show us that you're a big-time coach, that you're a great coach who's able to fix things on the fly. When things not going right, you can figure out a way to, hey, we got to get this going straight. You, He got to do that. 
He has to do that. He has to prove that. Right now, he's not. So, yeah, man, um, I'm interested to see what's going to go on next week, the rest of these games. Defense, again, played well. Shadur had moments, for sure. I really, really like him, but he got to stop that. Come on. He got to get talked to. Pull him in the office and chastise him the same way you chastise the offensive line. and Or do it publicly, okay? Because he had no problem throwing the offensive line under the bus. And people come on my channel, what are you talking about? He, he criticizes Shadur all the time. He'll say something like, oh, Shadur shouldn't have thrown that ball right there. No. Just tell Shadur, <laughs> if he don't shape up and fly right, they're not going to win games. They're going to keep losing. Do that publicly like you basically trying to do with the offensive line. Tell Shador he's hurting the team by taking all these damn sacks. Hurting himself, hurting the team. Tell Shador he needs to learn how to throw the ball away. Tell Shador he got to make quick decisions. Because I've been seeing Justin Fields get murdered and slaughtered for not making quick, timely decisions as a quarterback. That's something that he has to be able to make his mind up and, and, and be quick with it. Get the ball out quick as an NFL quarterback. Tell Shador he got to work on that. If not, they're going to keep losing. They're going to be in bad positions and bad field position. Tell him that publicly. Now, that's because that criticizing Shador, they, people was counting that against, as criticizing. Oh, Shador shouldn't have thrown that. Uh, Shador, Shador should have just, um, yeah, he should have waited a little bit. That ain't criticizing. That ain't criticizing. Criticizing is what he did to the offensive line. Hey, man, y'all be gone next year. Y'all gone. We get new linemen. Really, that's above criticizing. That's really like telling them they fired and really takes the steam out of a coach. You know, even just that's why I know like certain coaching things is not clicking. As a coach, you don't do that. You don't say even Shady McCoy, the biggest prime supporter, was like, yo, I'm not cool with him basically sending, tell, telling the offensive line they're going to be gone. It's ways to galvanize the troops in order to get them rallied up to come to practice the next day. That ain't going to get them rallied up to come to practice the next day, but you telling the press, telling the world, then you get new line and they out of they up, they up out of there. They gone. Come on, man. No, criticize your boy publicly. Tell him. Pull him to the side and do it publicly too. Since you public publicly criticize everybody else. Hey son, you're hurting this football team. You're hurting us. Figure that out, okay? We can stay behind. We can I can come and practice with you, help you figure it out. But all of this, you taking these sacks unnecessarily. How the one in the eleven team has 23 sacks. I don't even know how many sacks the team didn't allow this season. I know it got to be. I know it's more than that. With four games left to go. It was almost there. For real. Should do it be out here getting sacked five, six times a game. And a lot of that is not just on the offensive line. A lot of that is on Shadour. So, yeah, man. Um, that's a part of coaching. Being able to tell your son when he's doing something wrong, too. Being able to tell him he got to correct that. Not just demoting guys. Not just... Telling dudes they're going to be gone, you get new guys. Not just making speeches. You know, it's stopping the bleeding and figuring out a way to get your team to buy into what you're saying and do the correct things going forward and limit the mistakes. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace.